Hey folks, welcome back to the Byte Bit. So this is video number two in the Sapien PowerShell Studio uh, series, the 2018 edition. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on panels. Uh, just a general walkthrough of the panels themselves, what they do, uh, where to invoke them from, how to set up uh, a specific layout that is uh, more suitable to your needs when you program or code. Uh, and then also how to just uh, dock and float them uh, and um, kind of just be aware of what they do. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at the panels at the bottom here that's in a tabbed layout. And uh, I do want to mention that uh, the layout you're looking at right now with the project window here, the project panel here, the object uh, browser panel here, and so on. This is the default layout, and you can always invoke this layout at any point that you need to. So for instance, let me go ahead and break it, uh, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and close out of all of these panels at the bottom. And uh, I'll even close out the object browser here for a second. And now I may realize, okay, uh, this is what I needed to do to work on a particular type of script. But now I want everything to come back to the original layout. What I can do is click on the view uh, ribbon menu here. And under the layouts drop down, I have a default layout. I just want to point out a couple of things here. So the layouts that you see here, most of them are by default in the system. So this editor layout, design layout, this is all here for you. I have one that I created for this testing purpose, uh, but in reality, in my main lab where I actually do uh, create my scripts, there's a bunch of them. I, I think I have like maybe like 10 or 12 uh, that are suited you know, sp specifically for the projects I create. So there's ones for working with XAML, there's ones for working with PSF or GUI, there's one for working with scripts. Uh, things, for instance, I don't need the toolbox um, panel when I'm working with scripts and, and vice versa. So uh, you're going to have over time, you'll notice that you can create many, many layouts based on your needs. And I highly recommend you do because it'll just facilitate the development of your script or program in a quicker fashion. So if you come back to the layouts and you click on default layout, what you'll notice is everything's back, right? I have my project panel, my object browser panel, all of the panels at the bottom here in a tab layout, and I'm back to square one, if you will. And I can kind of go from there. So don't be afraid that if you want to close out a panel because it's in your way, you can always bring them back. But if you notice, it brought back everything. And uh, this is my second point on, on the panel layout. If you want to close out a panel and bring just that one uh, back, you have to invoke it in a different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out the output here as an example. And you can see that output is no longer available in the tab list. And when I go back home, on the right hand side here under the panels drop down, I can invoke ad hoc any panel I'd like to. So for instance, I'm going to go and bring up the output again. And you can see that it's back in the tab list, right as I expected it to be. And the same thing goes for the others around it. Here's the object browser panel. I'll close that out. And if I want to bring just that one back, I'll click on Panels, Find Object Browser, and I'm back to the layout that I'm, I'm used to. So all of these panels, it's, it, you know, it doesn't destroy anything. You can always close them out, bring them back, uh, and, and so forth. There's also ways that you can hide and pin them, and that's what I want to look at next. Okay, so we have two ways that we can actually pin or auto-hide the panels, and uh, I'm going to start out with this section here to use as an example. Now, if you take a look at the, the right hand side here of the toolbar for the output panel, you can see that it's uh, showing you auto hide. Uh, in fact, the pin uh, icon is actually facing downward to imply that it's you know going to pin this panel for you, uh, and it'll always be there uh, so that you can reference it visually or interactively if you need to. Now, again, for some folks who are interested in having the most amount of real estate for coding itself, this may be a hindrance. Uh, and if it is, then you want to kind of at least auto hide, if not remove it. So that's what I'm going to show you now. If you actually click on the pin, two things will happen. The first thing is the pin will actually change to a horizontal icon, implying that it's set to auto hide and obviously takes in a larger section of the IDE itself. And if I take the mouse away from it, you'll see that it auto hides and I can get back to my main window. In fact, this is really quite useful. Let me just bring up a, a script here for a quick second, a form script, and you can see now I have a much larger uh, real estate in order to actually work on or code, which is very helpful. And then I can actually just take a mouse over any of the panels here that are tabbed and get the result that I'm um, looking for. And even though it's set to auto hide, I can click on it and again, get the value or, or you know, uh, perform any action you would uh, in the panel normally. 
However, uh, again, this may be something that is a little bit uh, of a hindrance as well, in that in order for me to actually go back and forth between the code and the, the actual panels, they're going to auto hide. So again, this is all based upon your preference, what you kind of like to see happen during the course of your uh, layouts. And uh, depending on what that is, you can set it up any way uh, you'd like to. So that is essentially the pinning or auto hiding of auto hide feature for the panels and again if I want to change that and bring that back I can certainly just do that here and um, uh, once I do you'll see that I have them docked again and they're ready to go now this also applies to the panels you see surrounding the start page or the content area that's the project uh, you know panel here the object browser panel properties and functions and so on so the second point, or actually the next point I want to make is that you actually have the ability to drag and drop. And when you click on a title, uh, the actual title bar here for project, uh, you're going to notice a couple of things happen. The first is the, the panel below it takes over the entire real estate of that uh, area that region that might be perfect that might be exactly what you're looking for but you do notice that there are some of these callouts that are now uh, present for you or available and you can actually select which area you'd like to kind of have them or have this particular panel display in well first of all I can let go of the, the panel here and I have a free floating window and for some which actually you not know let me just resize it a little bit for some this might be perfect this might be exactly the way you want uh, this project panel to display or I can just click on it bring it back here and I can bring it back to the top section where it used to be you have full freedom to configure and design uh, or lay out the panels uh, any which way you'd like uh, so that that covers the two points in terms of pinning and auto hiding I wanted to go over and with that let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the actual windows or the panels themselves Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go back to the console uh, panel here, which we did take a look at a second ago. And uh, the console is just as you'd expect it to be. This is a console session for PowerShell that you can invoke right within the IDE. And uh, you do notice that there's a couple of features in here or options that you can invoke as well. The first is a drop down that allows you to see a 32-bit session. Uh, which you can then use if you need to test something in that environment or you can go back to the 64-bit session and if you notice I'm, I'm right back where I started uh, in the sense that I have get date here and you can see the value of the result uh, in the console window now obviously you can do CLS and clear the screen which is fine but you're still within that session so any variables that you declare or scripts that you've called uh, will of course still be in quote unquote memory you can actually right click and you do have a couple options to to clear that the copy and paste is normal and you'd expect that of course as you as you go throughout the day uh, your code uh, but you also have the ability to restart the shell and if you click on that what's going to happen is it'll just clear out the shell for you and you have you're back to a clean slate uh, if you will you can also right click and cancel execution so if you're running say a, a PowerShell job or PS job or you're invoking a session of some kind uh, and you want to cancel that or stop that uh, you can certainly do so and uh, come back to the prompt where you can continue on with your code or uh, testing that you need to do so very simple and straightforward but again very helpful uh, if you need to kind of get to it in the IDE itself rather than having a separate console or the ISC opened uh, for you to code in uh, the next panel is the find results and find results is actually very interesting and uh, I think it'll come into play as you start working through a larger and larger um, uh, number of pages or scripts within your project or a lot more code as you can kind of get to based on the project or the uh, tool or uh, application you're trying to build. So the way that find results works is it's sort of like a list and it'll show you all of the occurrences for what you're looking for. Let me let me explain. Uh, get to that in a demo real quick. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this test page here. I'm going to open up a project for us just real quick. And uh, what I'll do is once that's open, uh, I'm going to leave all the documents uh, closed, by the way. You can see that I don't have anything open. In fact, I can just open up the PSS real quick. You'll see that it's set up here. Now, um, let's say if I wanted to find something, a, a command or a particular parameter that I've defined and I want to kind of go through all of its instances. Well, the find results panel is perfect for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the, um, the ribbon here and under the home menu, I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to say find in files. 
I'll bring this window out here for a quick second. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say get date, right? It's a simple kind of search. And in the find in, I'm going to say instead of this current document, which there may be, uh, you know, zero instances of that, I'm going to say uh, the current project, okay? And when I do hit the find in files, it's going to go ahead and uh, go through the entire project and it's going to give you all of the occurrences, including the file that it exists in the actual line where it's called. And what's uh, great about it is if I actually open up, let's say the settings, I wanna get to this particular uh, instance of it. If I double click, it's actually gonna open up the file for me in the tab, as you can see here. And it's gonna take me right to that location or the call for that, uh, that variable or commandlet or whatever you're looking for. Now, just another note here, you'll see on the output section here, it says the file was created by an older version. This is again a demo uh, that I've set up for you so most of these scripts or projects that I invoke will have this and it's just letting you know that uh, because this was created on an older version of PowerShell Studio the next time I save um, it'll create a backup and convert it to the latest version which is great you know just uh, it's all done behind the scenes so no work for me okay um, yeah so let's go back to find results here and the other thing to note is it does give you some information matching lines files you know searched great but also gives you a check mark which you can actually see that uh, I've been to this particular instance uh, or iteration of it and I've done the work I need to and I can move on and if you open up the next one uh, I'll go back to the find results you can see that the check mark shows up and I have the uh, information there for me now I can actually right click on here and I can say clear which is great uh, or I can mark as unvisited if I feel like nope I need to come back to that again I can just click that the check mark will go away uh, and of course you can clear out the contents of it so if I right click and I say clear uh, it's gone and I can start a new search uh, if I need to so find results will come in handy especially as I said you're working on multiple files or a very large project that has multiple child uh, forms or, or scripts that you invoke and it's a, a good way to kind of visually see uh, all the instances of it and which ones you have visited uh, and which ones you haven't all right. So the help uh, panel is actually also important, but again, you know, depends on your particular workflow. Uh, the help will actually give you that the the quote unquote help or get help on a particular commandlet uh, or function that you're expecting. So for instance, if I just double click on test path here, or I'll just right click on it and I'll say context help. What you're going to notice is a couple of things happen. The help uh, panel, of course, is highlighted and it shows you exactly what you would see if you did get help in the console for the commandlet, in this case, test path. And uh, you can scroll down and get your examples and, and so forth. Uh, again, very helpful. But also, under the object browser, it takes you directly to that instance there. And you can actually hover over. It says determine whether all elements of a path exist. So then you can right click on this and you can go to more help. You can show help or online help. Go look at the, uh, the Microsoft documentation on it and go look at the Sapien documentation on it as well, uh, including inserting it into your application. So help can be, well, helpful uh, in the right circumstance for you. The output window is actually very important and I think what I've started doing uh, in the recent past is I'll actually have this window out to the side as I'm debugging or troubleshooting a um, an application, especially ones that I have not written myself. So if somebody does give me a uh, an application or a script that they uh, you know intend to use for the organization, uh, so what I'll normally do is I'll just kind of drag this window out here for a second, leave it as a standalone window. Let me clear this out. And I'll have this running on a second monitor or something or a side as I start debugging and troubleshooting the application, especially when I do trace points and breakpoints, which we'll go over in a little bit, uh, where I actually want to step into a particular function or a, a commandlet or piece of code and see it in action and see what the variables are, outputs and such. So um, this is normally what I would do uh, in that regard. But you will get all of your statements here. If there is an error message, if it couldn't compile, uh, if it uh, for some reason found an issue with one of the variables or a typo, uh, this, this window, this panel will show you all of that information. So uh, very useful for that. Uh, let me go ahead and just bring this back here real quick. And uh, I'll leave it for now here. Uh, so the output is there. The tools output is actually very similar to the output, but of course, 
uh, as you'd imagine, it's specific for the tool. So for instance, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to build out an application here just, just to show you exactly what comes up. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll say uh, package at the top and I'll say build. When I do click on build, uh, pay attention to this window here because you'll actually see a bunch of information come across. So uh, you can see that here. In fact, I'll close out this window. And what you can tell is if you go back up, it shows you that it's gonna create the project, it's gonna build it out, and you kind of have all this data coming through. It merges, it gives you some information, uh, tells you the, the path that it's gonna be saved to, it talks about the manifest, which we can discuss in a later video, then it tells you completed. So good way to see that your uh, when you build out your MSI or your package or your installer, your, your executable, uh, if everything went according to plan. In fact, when you do build out your MSI, it'll actually talk about all the dependencies or the uh, included files that you would need for your project, like your assemblies. So you can also see if there were any issues with that as well. So a quick glance of it before you actually run the application and do your testing. And again, you can right click and say clear and it's gone from the window. So the next thing is the performance panel. So this panel will show you in real time uh, the CPU and memory usage for the particular script or application you're currently working on or debugging or testing. Right? Uh, in order to actually use this though, you do need to enable it and that's what I want to kind of show you uh, before we go through the demo. If you look at the home menu here, you'll see that uh, next to the run button options, there's this monitor um, option here. And if you highlight or hover over it, it's, it tells you that's gonna enable the performance monitor for you. So I'm gonna click on it and have that enabled. And then when I actually run this program, uh, which I'll just move over to the side because that's not what we're interested in. And I click on the performance here. You can see that I'm getting real-time updates for both the CPU and memory as the application runs. Uh, this is actually just a test app that will go ahead and ping through an asynchronous call, uh, a particular IP address. And watch what happens when I actually do start that process here. So you can see immediately that the memory has sort of started climbing, CPU not so much, but again, I can hover over and see based on the time frame uh, what the resource or usage was. And it'll keep monitoring for you uh, in the background until you're done. This is useful for many, many reasons, as I'm sure you can kind of uh, pick out. Uh, mainly being that if you do have an application that is resource intensive or a hog, especially in one or part of your, um, your application, it's an easy way to find that out. And then you can go ahead and reprogram or just evaluate the code and see if there is another way that you can do it so that it doesn't. Uh, utilize uh, as much of the resources as it is. So it's gonna keep going here and I'm satisfied. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the application here. It just gives me some information in the output. But in the performance, I still have this snapshot and I can kind of work with it and kind of see what's going on and know the spikes um, and then go back and kind of look at the code. Uh, useful again, especially also if you're debugging other folks code, right? Or if you're evaluating other um, applications that were made by other folks in your organization or elsewhere. So good, uh, good thing to have in your toolbox. Okay, so that covers the panels here uh, that are tabbed for us in the quote unquote default layout. Again, there are a number of panels that are sort of available to you. And in the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at the panels that surround this content area, the start page, uh, coding section, if you will, such as the object browser and project and such. And then once that's done, we'll take a look at saving um, a layout based on your particular needs. And then we'll start to look at other aspects of the IDE, including the ribbon um, and all the features that it has within that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions or, or comments, please do let me know. And uh, hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks.